if you use it for a second, you kind of get used to it. Well, it's something like that. So what they want to make us aware of, that this is a great time of potential. It's a time of change. It's a time of wonderful opportunity. Along with that, the downside is that there's going to be a lot of problems, too. Anytime we have change, we have fear and a lot of other problems. It, you don't have to be a genius to look at our planet right now and look at our planet as a whole and see all the people around it in China and Africa and the Polynesian Islands, Australia, Asia, everywhere, that everybody is growing up with different ideas, different concepts. We are a world in turmoil. We are being thrown together through communications and technology. Some places it's going well, some places it's not going very well. But unfortunately, most people, when things aren't going well, they turn to whatever they regard as their religious beliefs. They put, try to put faith in what they believe. And these ideas are not going to serve them in the coming years because these old philosophies, old thinking, old religions don't really provide answers for the coming questions that we're going to have. Consequently, there's going to be a lot of emotional hardship for many people, Murder, suicide, crime, things like this are going to be tremendously on the rise. We are going through a time of change. On February 3rd, 1844, we began 184 years of change. This is when we start to move into the proximity of this new age uh, position, this new cycle. And at that point, things start to accelerate. We've noticed just ourselves uh, in the last few years the great acceleration of inventions and so forth. Uh, there is no other time in the development of our society when we will accelerate as fast as we have the last 100 years and will the next 20. Uh, look where we came from covered wagons to going to the moon in such a short space of time where for 2,000 years before that we hardly grew anything at all. Well, we had this 92-year period from 1844 up to 1937, which was the beginning or the first half of this changeover period. The Pleiadians say the changeover period is 184 years long. It goes from 1844 up to, let's see, that would be what, 2028. So they're saying that the first half, the things start changing, inventions and everything greatly accelerate. Since 1937, on February 3rd, that's the second half of this changing period. This 92 years is dominated now um, by all the problems that come up because of this accelerated change. And boy, aren't we seeing them. Uh, there's going to be a lot of wars, a lot of other emotional problems. One thing they said we can count on seeing is there will be a tremendous rise in new religions and new ideas. So apparently, and we are seeing some of that, apparently as things get more difficult, people search for answers. They search for ways to solve you know, their problems. And when they do this, they come upon their own conclusions. They then form together, maybe in a small group, give themselves a name, and we have a new religious sect. Well, we can expect that to happen a lot more as times get more and more difficult. One other thing of note, they mentioned that because of this change and because of the increase in radiations, that those people born on February 3rd, 1937, as close as possible to 11.20 in the morning, have the greatest possibility of being the teachers, prophets, and geniuses of our time. See, that was the optimum time, apparently, for people to come in and be affected uh, by the radiations, just as they were at that moment. From that date forward for a year, through the whole year of 1937, beginning of February 3rd, they said it was the highest probability of these geniuses, prophets, and way preparers and teachers to be born. So we might look to um, people at that age. We're in 1992 as I'm speaking now. So those people would be, what, 55 years old. So we could look to, uh, as you're looking around at people that are speaking, lecturing, and talking, you might keep an eye out for people who are roughly 55 years old right now. And let's see how many of them have really come forward. Because, of course, even though you may be a highly evolved spirit, and evolved means wisdom gained over a number of lifetimes. Okay, So we may have a number of those people that were born, but they were born in poor environments, or for whatever reason they weren't able to really come through. So It's also interesting that that's when Billy was born, right at that moment, why they caused him to be born at that time. And they seem to have very high respect for Billy's evolution. Billy is not Pleiadian. He is not Lyrian. He's from an unusual little race called Lawsons. Apparently they live on only one planet, are very, very old, older than the Pleiadians themselves, and consequently are very good beings for becoming prophets because because of the age of their evolution, they can withstand and understand things very well. 
Also, I think it has something to do uh, with the brain matter itself being able to grow larger numbers of connectors, uh, which can hold more acids and consequently more intelligence. So there seems to be something to that. That's probably why they altered Billy's thoughts when he was seven. It, there's probably a, a strong connection there someplace. So anyway, they want us to be aware that scientifically it's just a fact that our solar system is moving into this new period. That we're in new geography. We're getting closer to the central sun. The radiations from the sun have a really strong effect on our thinking and so forth here. Consequently, this new age period, which is, which is here, is a very good time for potential. It's potentially a great time for us to grow. But this means those of us who move more, and to more towards a spiritual life, seeking out the answers of creation, learning to develop uh, our world and our society around spiritual laws, have a much better chance now because of uh, this location where we're at. We have a better chance of being heard, being understood, and developing ourselves. So it's important, you know, if you feel the need to be somehow involved, to be inspiring, to be a role model for others. And I think inspiration is the word here for the next few years, that it's not a good time probably to go out with a gun, pick up a gun and shoot the bad guys. It's not a good time to go out and fight in direct opposition to the negative influences on the planet. Instead, it's a time to turn away from that and let the negative things spin out on their own, fight among themselves. It's a good time to do some uh, woodshedding for yourself, to become a spiritual person yourself, to rise spiritually within yourself to your capabilities, work on you know development of self, and by that you will become a role model and an inspiration to others. And most importantly, as you're doing this, as you're developing yourself spiritually, make sure there's integrity with it. Don't do it and don't let your ego get involved. Catch yourself if you find yourself, you know, becoming ego-minded, wanting to be popular, needing to be successful to write a book or you want to do a television show. In other words, don't make things up because true spiritual development, uh, part of that is the development of integrity to self. You will not be a good role model nor a successful inspiration to others if what you're doing is not filled with integrity. I think integrity is probably the main thing that we look for in our leaders, in our role models, and sadly enough, it's one of the main things that's missing right now among our leaders that we normally see in today's world. Our presidents, our leaders, our, you know, our generals and so forth, even though they think they're doing the right thing, that this world is terribly lacking in integrity. So keep that in mind when you're on your own path of uh, spiritual growth here. Incidentally, the Pleiadians see a pretty good future for us, even throughout all of the chaos and other things that are coming up. Uh, they see a rather positive future. As a matter of fact, there are a couple of ways of calculating the future. As you said, there's one way to calculate. There are two ways to see the future. You can use mechanical or spiritual means to see what's called a future vision. You can look ahead into the future, and that's fairly accurate. Or you can also use a numerology and the numeric systems and so forth, mathematics to like predict future. And that's not nearly as accurate. They have looked ahead in future view and seen a rather pleasing uh, future for us that we actually, based on events in 1975, they showed Billy a future where we had grown peacefully to a society. He was looking 500 years ahead. That we had spacecraft very similar to the Pleiadians. We had... Uh, uh, facilities on the moon and the outer planets, and we were doing fairly well, and our population was much lower. So there is, uh, sounds like a pretty good uh, possibility for growth in the future, so let's see, see what we can all do to be part of that. Okay, I see on the old little wheel here we're ending the side of the, or coming to the end of this side of the tape. So um, I'll see you on the next side.